Good morning. There, do you see this? See my t-shirt? Here's my Ganesha's t-shirt that my dear brother Mark got for me, I think, just before he uh, passed away. And there's a little Ganesha right there. Ganesha on my shoulder. It's a Ganesha day. Uh, one of the two big uh, uh, Ganesha festivals of the year. I think officially it starts uh, um, very early uh, in the morning tonight kind of thing. Anyway, uh, as you probably know, you saw yesterday uh, all my Ganesha posters and things like that. Uh, uh, you know, I, I wish I could say that that I was a, a, a well-educated and informed and uh, uh, steeped in all of the uh, the esoteric Ganesha lore, but you know I'm a lazy guy, and I'm not. Uh, I just know that I love God, and the easiest way for me to picture and to conceptualize uh, something that can't be pictured and can't be conceptualized, it's easy for me to think of it like this. Now, I know I've shared uh, what I'm about to read to you, uh, with you before, and probably every year this time. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm going to do it again, because uh, I, I asked the question in today's uh, uh, talk or title of today's talk is uh, who who do you invoke now we let's see if I've got it here someplace uh, uh, well I think I'll just read it to you it's very it's short here this is from, I better plug a book, otherwise I won't think that I've made an effort today to uh, keep a roof over our heads. So I'll say, well, I, at least, dear, at least I plugged a, a book. And the book is Low Magic. It's all in your head. You just have no idea how big your head is. Uh, it's from my good friends at Llewellyn. And I talk about invocation, okay, and, and uh, uh, because invocation is a pretty important thing, especially uh, when a magician is dealing with the Solomonic formulae. Now, the Solomonic formulae is just briefly imitating the formula that's set forth in the story of Solomon. That uh, King Solomon first entered into the presence of God, or the, the singularity, okay? Whatever God is, the biggest thing, the most complete thing, the most wall-to-wall -wall smoothness of creation. God entered, or Solomon entered into the presence of, uh, of God and offered to be a conduit of this divine, cosmic, universal will in order to Build the build the temple or the miniature working model of the, of uh, God, and that it was so impressive to the singularity that he would do that instead of ask for little shit, little piss ass things here and there and selfish human things. There. No, he wanted to. I want to 
synchronize myself for the purpose of this project. I want to synchronize myself with the ultimate universal will in this matter. That way I won't make any mistakes. And the singularity said, boy, that's impressive. Okay, you got it. And then Solomon then in turn had the uh, the ability, the power and authority to uh, uh, direct all of the uh, angels and demons, and the whole spectrum of uh, the hierarchy of executors of getting stuff done. Okay. That was a horrible explanation. I'm going to read you. Pop Goes Ganesha is what this is called. And the chapter just before this was, this is what invocation is not about. And I tell the story of when I tried to invoke Mercury by lying all night, you know. But this is the opposite. This is what initiation is about. Now I'm going to describe, oh, it starts off. All around the mulberry bush, the monkey chased the weasel. The monkey thought was all in fun. Pop goes the weasel. A penny for a pool of thread, a penny for a needle. That's the way the money goes. Pop goes the weasel. Okay, it's a traditional nursery rhyme. In case you just... Uh, arrived on the planet. And now I'm going to describe to you a little ritual that whirled into my bag of magical tricks about 10 years ago. I first created it to be a whimsical meditation that I could quickly perform mentally to begin and end my morning routine, but soon it became for me something much more. In fact, within the context of its goofy simplicity, I found not only a powerful banishing ceremony, but oop, also a profound and breathtaking effective technique of invocation. As it, has begin, as it has become a key component to both my meditation and magical rituals, and because I'll be referring to it in several places in the chapters that follow, I'd like to share it with you now. It's one thing to have an intellectual grasp and appreciation of the great G. Okay, that great G I'm talking about is the, uh, the, that's what God is, the great G. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to uh, share a little uh, thing that I wrote earlier on that. In chapter one, I mentioned the importance of invocation in the magician's personal relationship with the supreme intelligence, or the great G. That's who Solomon entered into the presence of. In this chapter and the one to follow, I'm going to share with you not only my thoughts on the matter, but also a ritual that has now become an integral part of my formal magical operations. For many years, however, I missed the point of invocation entirely. For me, invocation was just a cold and intellectual exercise, a necessary formality like doffing one's hat when entering the house of worship. I'm certain my attitude stemmed from the bad taste that lingered in my mouth from all of the, quote, invocations I choked down as a lad growing up Protestant in 1950s Nebraska a time when every service club, barbecue, stock car race, Cub Scout meeting, school convocation, and football game was kicked off with something like this. Oh, Heavenly Father, we call upon thee to be with us here today as we gather ourselves on this athletic field of combat. Bless these boys and their families, faculty, and friends who are here to witness the strength and courage and determination of our, of our proud screaming eagles and the godly man who coaches them. 
bless our team and give them your strength as they battle for victory for the glory of your Son. We pray in his victorious holy name, Jesus Christ, amen. Please know that I'm not ridiculing the concept of anyone acknowledging the presence of deity prior to embarking on any important or serious undertaking. Indeed, by turning our attention to above, even briefly or half-heartedly, we connect something of ourselves with the universal source of creative energy. So what I'm saying is even a funky, half-assed, insincere, bourbon, adult invocation is pretty nice. And honestly, who among us couldn't use a little shot of that kind of juice when we want our team to win, our fish fry to sell out, our sermon to change lives, or our prayers answered? Even though magical invocations are, or at least should be, something dramatically different, most models presented to, uh, to modern magicians, at least those examples who have come down to us from the, the magical adepts of the 19th century, are pretty damn boring. Okay, and I give an example of a beautiful, but just wordy, long, tedious, golden dawn uh, initiation or invocation. In my rebellious and cynical mind, this Golden Dawn prayer and others like it are only slightly more magical than the pep talk invocation bellowed through the bourbon belches for the benefit of the proud screaming eagles. It would take me many years and more than a bit of magical ripening before I got it straight in my mind who exactly, or more precisely, what I was invoking. Until then, my invocations remained breathtakingly anemic. So who is this soul-wise, soul-eternal, and soul-merciful one? This is Golden Dawn dropped those names. Who is Adonai? Who is the Holy One? When I stick my Solomonic magician's finger up into the great cosmic overhead electric light socket of above, who is the above? The above I'm plugging my blowness into. If it's the same abusive father god of the great dysfunctional family of Crizzle Muse, before whom I resentfully bent my boyhood knee, then no thank you. If it's the same phantom ear into which I superstitiously poured my teenage quid pro quo prayers for my girlfriend's menstrual regularity, if it is the same ghost god of birth-blinded nationalism in whom every family, clan, tribe, and nation goes to bloody war, if it is the same all-powerful yet curiously money-starved god of oily televangelists, if it is the same might and white is right god of fascist pundits and politicians, or indeed, if it is any god who would damn me for possessing common sense and daring to use it, I most disrespectfully say, screw God. I'm better off invoking my own goddamn common sense. Eventually, I discovered that's exactly what I needed to do. In the introduction to this book, I reveal that I worship a supreme consciousness that is ultimately the source of all manifest and unmanifest existence, and that I believe the ultimate nature of this super existence is transcendently good. 
a good that is so all comprehensively and incomprehensively infinite that there can be nothing outside of itself. No, no opposite to this great good. It swallows up all concepts of duality. If we could wave a magic wand and strip away all the superstitious absurdities and bigoted nonsense that infect most of the world's spiritual institutions, we would discover that this supreme consciousness, this great G, is the true God of every religion. The true God every religion. The great G is not limited or parochial totem of any particular race or family or tribe or nation or culture or cult. The great G is too big to be the purview of any cult or philosophy. In fact, the great G is so big there is only one cosmic vessel capable of accommodating its more than absolute absoluteness. And that's what invocation is all about. Squeezing the great G into the only place in its own universe where it can fit. And that place is you. One would think that it shouldn't be too difficult to connect with the great G. After all, it can never be anywhere other than completely within you and without you. There are, however, many obstacles preventing you from waking up to the reality that you already are at this moment, wallowing eternally in the infinite wall-to-wall -wall bliss of great G consciousness, and that every one of these obstacles is also you. And that, too, is what invocation is all about, getting all the phony little yous out of the way in order to make elbow room for the great G. Unfortunately, all those phony little yous are pretty much everything you mistakenly think you are. But there is a fast and extremely effective way to burn away all the phony little yous and by doing so create a, the super vacuum needed to suck all the glorious inrush of the great G. It's a two-part magical technique as old as human consciousness itself. The first part of the technique is the act of falling utterly, absolutely, unwaveringly, breathtakingly, helplessly, hopelessly, physically, mentally, emotionally, sexually, falling in love with God. Second part of the secret is allowing yourself to simultaneously receive back that same measure of love from God. Like audio feedback created by a microphone that has been placed too close to the speaker of an amplifier. This simultaneous giving and receiving of love creates an ever-increasing feedback of bliss that nothing less, that is nothing less than the alternating electrical current of great G consciousness. The current that joyously creates, sustains, and destroys the cosmos. 
And that's what invocation's about. It took me a long time, over 35 years, to finally come to this realization. And it came through the agency of a simple ritual, which I will now share with you. And that ritual is Pop Goes Ganesha. And tomorrow, as the festival, as Ganesha's festival uh, uh, continues, actually it starts super late tonight, I will share that ritual with you. So, until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself, and be good to each other. Ganesh, 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 Ganesh. Ganesh, Ganesh, Ganesh. Ganesh, 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 Ganesh. Ganesh. See you tomorrow.